Welcome to part six of walking on the Ryerson Station warpath. And once again, I'm so into this. I, as you notice, water is a very important thing in this world. I asked my brother when he lived out in uh, California. I said, Sean, what do you miss most most about Pennsylvania? And he said, Terry, I miss the rivers. And after that, I visited the Yokogany River at least once or twice a month to just to go because no one thinks about it. I mean, it's beautiful, you know? Look at this. This, is, this isn't a river, but it, it's a, uh, you know, a big stream. This is the Wheeling Creek, I believe is the name of this creek. And it goes all the way to Wheeling, West Virginia. But, uh... Like I said, if you guys noticed, there was some flat land back here and how the coal mines, like, saliva, they, every time I, every time someone who works for the coal company goes by my property, they're, they're, I can see the saliva coming out of their mouths because they can't wait to make it a parking lot. And they're gonna drill right down the middle of that beautiful Indian hill that the Indians used to live on. And they're gonna make it a coal, a shaft to get down into the mine, I know it, man. I know it, it's the, most, it's the only place, and this, this is a flood plain here, but where I live, it doesn't flood, so, I mean, the, the streams go by there, but uh, they, don't, they don't flood like this. I mean, they, the streams flood. The, the bigger creek floods pretty good, but not bad. So yeah, I, I don't know. You always gotta think the worst, and then if it doesn't happen, then you think, oh, that's cool, it didn't work, it didn't work out the way I thought it would. <laughs> But yeah, if you always picture things turning out bad, and they don't, then you're like, woohoo, time to have a good time. But anyways, like I was telling you in the last part, uh, this is gonna, all these videos are gonna be called uh, fracking for gas is turning the USA into a toxic hell. I'm gonna shorten it down to the, the littlest form of the video that I can and uh, I just and once again when I'm done with this march this 10 mile march I'll be at uh, 7,106 miles and four and a half years of walking for the soldiers and patriotism today is a great day by the way uh, we're going there I'm going to a tea party function in Waynesburg uh, I was invited by the uh, well, they don't want to call their CSLs Tea Party people now, but they're the Patriots. Uh, but they are Tea Party Patriots, but they changed their name to... I, I call Tea Party Patriots basically Republicans who are patriotic. If you want to, you know, I've been involved in the Patriot movement since, you know, before the Tea Parties and everything, so... Uh, uh, my my group's called the Sons and Daughters of Liberty, and I have meetings here in Greene County and Fayette County, and and uh, but uh, yeah, there. So, what I'm gonna do today? This is cool. I thought of this while I was walking and talking about fracking, how they're turning America the beautiful into a toxic hell. Name of this video. Just go down to the bottom of this video and go to my blog on all the fracking, and go back through all my blogs. I did one on harp oil and all kind of, you know about the Gulf Gulf of Mexico the disaster and what's really going on there and depleted uranium if you have a son or daughter you got to in the Marines or Army or Air Force or Navy you got to go in and check out what the hell they're doing to our greatest Patriots I can't believe it, it makes me sick you got to check out all those videos but what I'm gonna do today <laughs> since I'm a third party candidate and I'm not allowed to talk. I'm not allowed to be a guest speaker. No, the guy who's walked 7,106 miles and probably is the most patriotic civilian in this country. You can't question my patriotism. No, they don't ask me to do to be a guest speaker on patriotism. No, hell no, they're getting all the Republican freaking hacks. Uh, makes me mad. So what I'm gonna do, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna wear my uh, 
my weapon of mass disruption football helmet that I made for it's my Patriot football helmet for my uh, my gear for when I go to protest it's my helmet <laughs> I made a patriotic helmet so I'm gonna wear that helmet and I'm gonna interview I'm gonna interview Patriots at the tea party and talk to them and say hey I'm the extreme Patriot and I'm here to interview uh, you on why you're here and what do you think about uh, uh, you know patriotism in our country and this the president and and I'm gonna get it on film I'm gonna be a reporter this is cool and so since I can't be a speaker as always this is how you gotta be in life my friends if you you, you always gotta turn a disadvantage into an advantage like when I was Mr. Mom you know it was tough that was a really hard job but I found ways to get through it you know it was a I had to be the rock for my kids you know and I, I built two great kids I have three beautiful children they're grown up now but uh, the two that I was uh, I, you know, I turn, it turned out good it could have been bad I mean you know, uh, the mom didn't want to raise them, so I did. And uh, so with the help of my mom and dad, who raised me, turned me into a great American, <laughs> I turned to my children and my, my daughter, I'm very, my oldest daughter, I didn't raise her, but I was around a lot, so, and I got to talk to her all the time, so, you know, so she's a great, I got three great kids. But I'm very proud of the job that I did being the foundation for my two children who were at home with me for six years. And like I said, I, you always just gotta take advantage of your disadvantage, I call it. And uh, if you think of what's a disadvantage, like, like I said right now, I'm really depressed, sad.